Hello everyone, my name is Lenka, welcome to my channel and in today's video I would like to share with you 7 financial aid alternatives for your Erasmus Mundus scholarship. I'm a variety of Erasmus Mundus scholarship, I'm currently studying in Sweden during my third semester and I got the scholarship but today I will share with you the tips and places where to search for alternatives to finding your program if you were not given the scholarship. In the last video, I talked to Julia, who is currently studying in Denmark and she was not given a scholarship. With this video, I wanted to show you that it's possible to do this amazing program. At the end of this video, I share with you some very important things you should be aware of if you're applying for this program, you're accepted, but you're not given the scholarship admission. So check it out till the end. Firstly, the question, why do you actually need financial aid or why do you uh, search for scholarship? Well, I checked out this website of Global Markets and Local Creativities Program. An international student, which means someone coming from outside of the European Union, must pay 18,000 372 euro per annum and given the fact that Erasmus Mundus is two years program you need to pay the double which is 36,744 euro just for the tuition fees apart from that you need to pay the travels you need to pay insurance accommodation books food and so on I was given the scholarship which is covering me all the things mentioned above but uh, even though if you have amazing grades, sometimes the consequences are not in your favor and it might happen that you're accepted for the program but you're not given the scholarship. Sometimes this might happen because too many applicants from the same country applied and Erasmus Mundus uh, Consortium can accept only two people from one country or give two scholarships just from one country. So if you would apply any other year, maybe you would get the scholarship. So just don't think that the fact that you don't get scholarship, you don't deserve studying at that uh, university or that program. Just to mention, as I am given the scholarship, those are just the tips I would go for, I would search and I would be uh, researching on if I were not given the scholarship. So all of those tips I didn't have to go for because I got the scholarship, which I explained in other videos how I got them and I share other valuable tips. But today, let's see which other alternatives, which seven alternatives I would be opting for when searching for some funding. Firstly, this is quite obvious and it's loan. You can search for some student loan which have uh, some better conditions, especially for students. You're just paying the uh, extra rates, uh, extra commissions during your studies and then you have to repay it back after you're done with the, the school. If you're European and you're a part of Erasmus Mundus program, you can also apply for Erasmus Plus master degree loans, but you can also search for other bank loans in your country. If you would like to avoid any official loan, then you can try peer-to-peer -peer lending. This peer-to-peer -peer lending has few benefits and also few downsides. The interests are usually lower. The peer-to-peer -peer lending is also more personalized. You can explain why uh, you need this money. You can maybe show your experience. You can maybe be more personal toward the people who are lending, uh, borrowing you the money. And it's also way less hustle to searching for such a, such a loan and applying for it. However, there are other downsides. The downsides of peer-to-peer -peer lending is that they are usually short term oriented, which means that you usually have one to two, three years to repay it back. And if you're studying two years program, this might be uh, too little time to repay it back uh, with it such a short amount of time. Also, if you're doing this option, you need to really sell yourself. You need to put yourself out and say, why do you need this money? Which for some people who don't like to be exposed might not be the best option. And last but not least, uh, there is no option to defer your loan payments or qualify for student loan forgiveness or anything like that. So research well if you would be um, 
happy with peer-to-peer -peer lending. The third option, which might help you not fully, but at least partially to cover your tuition fee and your student life abroad, might be student prizes. Student prizes are given to deserving students who are well, um, having well uh, academic merits and um, basically it's just considered as a financial aid. They're one time award, so it's given only once, but it might really help you. The good thing is if you get a student prize, doesn't mean that you are not able to get a student loan or peer-to-peer -peer lending. Uh, for this, I would just Google, Google uh, student prize uh, in my country or student prize in the country you're going to study in or the continent and I'm sure you will find some. The fourth option is crowdfunding. This one needs a little bit preparation. It's a little bit time consuming, especially at the beginning. But there are so many platforms where you can go for crowdfunding. You will explain what are your knowledge? Why do you need this money? Again, like with peer-to-peer -peer lending. Um, and I am so sure if you show your passion, your values, your previous uh, knowledge and background and your career aspiration. There will be so many people wanting to help you to be part of this program. There, as I mentioned, there are a lot of platforms. I would maybe go for GoFundMe, but there are so many of them. And believe me, if a guy could raise $55,492 just for a batch of potato salad, I am so sure you can get decent amount of money for your education. The fifth option which you can go for is employer training. Now, let's say you're working for a company, you're doing an amazing job and they want you to get even better skills, even better training and education in what you're doing. So you can ask your boss or your company to get some company sponsorship or uh, any other financial help for your studies. Well, this might be a little bit complicated because sometimes the companies don't want you uh, let you go for two years and there is also a chance that during the studies you will decide, oh, I want to do something else. Maybe that's also the reason why you want to uh, study after you're working. So, but there are a lot of companies and it depends on in which field you are. Maybe in the IT, they will be much more open to allow you to study this master program. The sixth option is study and work. Usually the universities have some calendar where you pay uh, maybe for fourth time, you pay 25% before commencing the studies and then till the end of the semester, you pay another quarter of the tuition fee and so on. During this period of time, you can work and there are so many options to work. You can work remotely, you can tutor your colleagues, you can be babysitter or just whatever it's needed. The chances are high if you appear in country like Sweden or in the United Kingdom that even um, positions like a shop assistant will be nicely paid and they will at least help you to overcome this financial burden. Um, well, this, this option will definitely mean a lot of extra jobs and a lot of savings and maybe I also recommend you sell the stuff you will not need because if you're going to study this two years program, you won't be at home or you won't be at home as much. Um, so you don't need all those things. You don't need all the clothes and all the furniture. So try to get rid of uh, the things you don't need and get extra cash. Last but not least, try to get the support from your family or relatives. This might sound like, no, 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 this is not an option for, for me to ask my family for money. But maybe if you explain them why would you need this money for your education, that your education means better career, that means better opportunities for your family and just being better off. Um, I'm sure that your family will help you as much as they can. Studying Erasmus Mundus program or any other program is amazing investment and particularly about Erasmus Mundus. You're studying abroad at different universities with different people. There are endless um, amount of benefits this program can bring to you and to your life and to your career. So at the end, try to see the investment into your education really as investment because I learned this recently that the more you invest in yourself, it will come to you exponentially. And as I said, the investment into yourself is always the best investment you can do. 
in case none of these options works for you well and you think this is not the option I can go or it didn't work out for you or you don't want to even give a try because you're too shy and you don't want to get official loan then I would suggest following um, work during the year or do whatever you want travel and then apply next year again but meanwhile try to learn as much as possible go for some courses on udemy or coursera skillshare or even just youtube youtube is for free and there's so many uh, valuable information but try to really learn a lot especially for the program you're applying to Try to come up with some persona, what the ideal applicant uh, look like. Maybe get in contact with the already admitted student and ask them about their portfolio. What did they do? And try to get close, as close as possible. This is what I would do. However, so, and I promised you some information you should be aware of if you're applying for the scholarship. Candidates who do not secure a scholarship and wish to appeal the decision of the scholarship selection committee must do so in writing by email within two weeks from the point of notification from consortium of their failure to win a scholarship. So simply, if you were not given a scholarship, you can write an appeal and they will review your application, they will review your scholarship decision and who knows, it can always work out. So guys, this was everything. I would love to know if there are any other ideas maybe which you would have because uh, the more people, the more they know. I would like to end up this video with the thought which uh, and with the mindset with work, which worked for me. When I was applying, I wrote everywhere, I am accepted, I am accepted in 2020, I am accepted in 2020, I am accepted in 2020. And just tell it to yourself so you will believe it. and. You can do it. You're accepted in 2022 or 2023 or whatever application uh, date you're applying. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video. Bye bye.